presence at this forum today highlights the critical mandate of IBEC in strengthening cooperation and consultation between the national government, counter governments, and key agencies. These engagements are essential for sparring the country's equitable social, political, and economic development. This session is proof of our commitment to fostering effective governance and achieving our shared objectives. <coughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have made significant progress in implementing resolutions from the 23rd orderly session held on May 6, 2024. In line with the resolutions, <coughs> my office organized an induction and capacity retreat of the Finance and Budget Committee of IBEC. This retreat resulted in key resolutions and proposals for further enhancing collaboration between the two levels of government. We will continue with other capacity building programs for other committees of IBEC for optimal performance. Additionally, my office convened an extraordinary session which I chaired to address delays in the authorization of fund withdrawals from the County Revenue Fund, CRF, and the Integrated County Revenue Management System. The session resulted in unanimous resolutions, with a key decision being the issuance of guidelines by the Controller of Budget. I'm pleased to note that the Controller of Budget developed a draft circular to inform the consultations on the requirements for approval to withdraw from the county revenue funds. These guidelines will be presented here today for your review and further guidance. During the extraordinary session, we made significant progress regarding implementation of the integrated county revenue management systems. It was resolved that counties will continue to maintain and operate their existing revenue systems while the National Steering Committee finalizes development of the new system and corresponding regulations. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during our last meeting, we resolved to mobilize financial resources to onboard the remaining 19 counties on the Tax Administration Diagnostic Assessment Tool, TADAT program. My office, in collaboration with the Commission on Revenue Allocation, the National Treasury, United Nations Capital Development Fund, and other stakeholders has commenced initiatives in that direction. I'm also happy to note that, as reported during our last meeting, the CRIA launched and gazetted the model tariffs and pricing policy in July. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, further to our resolutions, we have successfully transferred movable assets, including registers and evaluation reports, to the 47 county governments. The IGRTC, in collaboration with NTSA, is facilitating the change of ownership of these assets. Additionally, the State Department of Devolution, in collaboration with IGTRC and other relevant MDAs has made significant progress in valuation of fixed assets in preparation for the ultimate transfer to respective county governments. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, besides the Ministry of Tourism, in executing the 50-50 revenue sharing directive from the National Parks, which host counties, has established a technical team of relevant stakeholders to develop a comprehensive implementation roadmap, a, 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 a topic that our Minister for Tourism and Wildlife will be speaking to in the agenda. The team has made significant recommendations, including proposing that the matter be handled by CRA in line with the constitutional mandate on revenue distribution. I urge the Ministry and CRA to expedite this process to assure full compliance with the Presidential Directive. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on the other hand, pending bills remain a significant concern for both levels of government. That is why we have specifically requested the Controller of Budget to provide regular progress reports during IBEC meetings. 
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the fertilizer subsidy program has recently been at the center of the national discourse. Through the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, we are enhancing farm production. The subsidy initiative is crucial in cushioning smallholder farmers from fluctuations in fertilizer prices, enabling them to retain competitive and contributing to reducing the high cost of living. Let me thank counties for their support in the last mile delivery of the fertilizer. I wish to state that our administration is committed to boosting and sustaining productivity in agriculture as per the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in execution of the mandate of my office in overseeing tea, coffee and dairy subsector reforms, we have made good progress in our determination to put more money in the pocket of the farmer. I urge county governments to work with us to avoid duplication for better results. As we also work to anchor and strengthen governance in cooperatives, it is important to know that farmers in other key subsectors are facing serious exploitation from middlemen for lack of sector-specific societies at the grassroots. For instance, Absence of corporate societies in the avocado subsector contributes to expensive inputs. Farmers are missing out on economies of scale, extension services, as there are no joint trainings of agronomist visits, poor prices due to brokers, among other challenges. I would like to congratulate the counties of Muranga, Meru, and now Laikipia for taking lead in organizing the avocado farmers into cooperatives. I want to throw a challenge to other county governments to borrow a leaf from the above mentioned devolved units to benefit our farmers. They are all Kenyan farmers. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in our focus of putting more money into the pocket of the farmer, it is imperative that we also harmonize cross county policies to enhance trade. A cabbage farmer from Meru targeting Kajedo town will have to pay sales in Meru, Embu, Trakanidhi, Kirinyaga, Muranga, Kiambu, Nairobi, Machakus, and Kajiado, a total of nine counties. This not only eats into their profits, but also increases the cost of doing business. The repo effect is a poor farmer and a high cost of living for everyone. I want to urge our county chief executives who are here that we need to consider harmonizing rates <coughs> and even be more innovative in resources mobilization to spur inter-county trade. The power of devolution lies in inter-county trade stimulating policies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the draft alcoholic deals and drugs control law bill 2024 envisions national level licensing for alcoholic drinks and drugs with revenue going to counties and relevant agencies we continue to urge counties to work with other national government agencies in establishing rehabilitation units in level three to five hospitals to assist those affected by the illicit alcohol and drug abuse I'll be engaging COG Committee on Legal Matters on this aspect, where we are urging counties to consider agreeing that NACADA takes over licensing where the counties take the revenue. And this, in our view, will free governors from being host held hostage by traders and bar operators. That is a conversation that we'll have with the legal committee to see whether we can agree on a common approach. This will also help us meet the Ministry of Health Directive of March 2024, requiring counties to establish rehabilitation centers in level three and above hospitals. Furthermore, we are working to develop the Joint Alcoholic Drinks Control Law based on the successful model from Mount Kenya region with plans to extend this framework to other counties. We are ready to collaborate with counties in addressing this issue comprehensively. Indeed, 
we convened a meeting between the Council of Governors Secretariat and key ministries, departments and agencies to build consensus on this bill. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you are all aware, the rejection of the Finance Bill 2024 and its eventual withdrawal by His Excellency President William Ruto has presented both levels of government with unprecedented challenges in terms of fiscal space. This resulted in critical fiscal documents being withdrawn while some at various stages of parliamentary approval. The voice of the people of the Republic of Kenya has been heard and we must work collectively to move forward. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to keep ourselves updated on the progress of key pieces of legislation, we have included a presentation from the Office of the Clerk of both Houses of Parliament in today's agenda. I'm also pleased that part of today's discussion will focus on the revision of budget estimates, DORA, currently before the Senate. Despite the fiscal challenges presented by the recent events in the country, His Excellency President William Ruto is committed to timely disbursement of resources to the extent possible. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during the last financial year, 2023-2024, the National Treasury transferred 354.5 billion shillings to counties by June 30, 2024, an equivalent of 92% of the total equitable share due to counties. The outstanding amount of 30.83 billion shillings for June was released in July. This was attributed to a shortfall in revenue collections and the limited fiscal space. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to revisit the pending bills. The National Treasury indicates that as of June 30, 2024, outstanding national government pending bills starts at 516.27 billion shillings, a decrease from 622.8 billion shillings as of June 30, 2023. Initial comparative reports for 26 counties show a significant reduction from 43.6 billion Kenya shillings to 33.9 billion Kenya shillings as of June 2024. We acknowledge this improvement and I urge county governments to collaborate closely with the controller of budgets to implement recommended measures to effectively address this issue through our budgetary process. Finally, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I reaffirm the commitment of our administration to advancing our shared goals through continued collaboration and effective governance. Let us leverage this session to address our challenges with the determination and build on our successes with a unified vision. I look forward to your fruitful participation in this 24th order session of IBEC. Asante Nisana.